Hi, I hope everyone's doing well. And I have a new book today. It's called The Big Book of Bible Learning. And it's a whole bunch of little stories. I don't know how many we'll read today. Um, but this one's called Jeremy's House Has Only One Room. How many rooms does your house have? Can you count them? Do you have a kitchen? A bathroom? How many bedrooms do you have? Living room, basement? You can uh, think of how many rooms you have, but Jeremy's house has only one room. Hi, welcome to our village. My name is Jeremy. I live in this house. Most people in our little village have houses like this. Would you like to come in and visit me? During the day, we are outside most of the day. No one stays inside our house much when the sun is shining. There's a lot more room outside. Do you see our donkey? Do you see our goats? Do you see our chickens? They all live here with us. Our donkey carries things for us. My father rides him too. If he doesn't, he must walk. Look at the walls of our house. They are bricks. They are made of dry mud. Mud holds them together. Be careful. A snake sometimes hides in the cracks. Can you see the snake? Do you see the window? It is only a hole in the wall. My father put strips of wood over it. Now people and animals can't get through. Our door is made of sycamore wood. If we had more money, we would use cedar wood. We open our door when the sun comes up. We close it when the sun goes down. People who are traveling can stop here to eat. When the door is closed, we will not let them in. We're afraid of robbers at night. Our house keeps us safe. The door is open. Let's go inside. We sit on mats during the day. At night, we sleep on them. Some neighbors have a chair or a stool to sit on. Do you see the hole in the floor? Do you see the fire in it? That's our stove. When it is cold or raining, we cook over it. The fire keeps us warm. The smoke goes up. We hope it goes out the window at the top of the wall. Do you see the chest over there? We keep most of our things in it. So there, see the window right above the fire? So the smoke goes out. And then there's their little chest where they, they keep all their belongings. Could you put all your belongings in a chest? I know I couldn't. I have a lot of things. We have only one room. It is our bedroom. It is our living room. It is our kitchen. It is our dining room. We do not have a bathroom. We go outside. When we wash, we use that big clay pitcher and a bowl. At night, we sleep in a row on our mats. My father sleeps at one end. My mother sleeps at the other end. My brother and sisters and I sleep between them. That helps us keep warm. Would you like to see our roof? Up here on the roof, you can see all the other houses around. In the summer, we eat up here and sleep up here. We sit and talk up here. The little wall around the roof keeps us from falling off. We store many things up here. Do you see the stalks of flax? My mother will make clothing from flax. Do you see the big jars? They're filled with grain. It is drying up here. The fruit in the clay bowl is drying up here too. See, they have a a fence around their roof because they're up there so much they want to make sure everybody is safe. What were some things they did on their roof? Do you remember? In the summer they slept up there. They go up there and talk. They were drying fruit and, and some uh, grain. And they eat up there. Thank you for coming to my house. I like it here. I thank God for my house every day. Do you? 
we should be thankful for the house that we have. This next chapter says, why can't I turn on the faucet? In Bible times, there were no faucets. There were no bathtubs like ours. There were no kitchen sinks like ours. Bible time people had to go to a well or a cistern to get water. The women carried the water from the well. This is how they carried it. The big pot on the woman's head is made of clay. Can you carry a pot like that? It is something fun to try. If you have something that your mom or dad says you can, like something that's plastic, not glass, put it on your head and see if you can walk with it. At the, at the well, a woman let the big jar down with a rope. The jar went down into the water. When it was full, the woman pulled it up. Then she put the jar on her head. She carried the jar home. The wells were not very wide, but they went down farther than a tree goes down. How did they get so deep? Men had to dig them. How would you like to dig a well? It is was hard work. It's easy to get water today. We just turn on our faucets, don't we? Have you thanked God today for water? I haven't yet, but I'm going to thank him right now. Thank you, God, that we have water. Um, and we have hot water, too. That's nice, especially when you want to take a bath or a shower. Let's lie down and eat our lunch. Hmm. Did you hear that? Let's lie down and eat our lunch. Where do you eat your lunch? Most of the time you sit on a chair. You put your lunch on a table. Sometimes you eat your lunch with a fork, a spoon, and a knife. In Jesus' time, many people lay down to eat their lunch or dinner. They called this reclining. One night, Jesus and his friends went to a home in Jerusalem. They went to a, ups a room upstairs. They reclined to eat in that room. This was the last meal Jesus had with them before he died. How did people eat this way? They leaned back on cushions. They left the left arm held them up, kind of like I'm sitting, and they stretched out their feet. Can you try it? Can you lean on your left? arm and stretch out your legs. How would you like to eat that way? That bread looks like pizza. What do you think? That is Bible time bread. It looks like pizza without all the pizza goodies on top. Bible time bread is much like the bread part of our pizza today. It's thin, it's round. Sometimes people punched holes in it. It doesn't look much like a loaf of bread at the, from the grocery store. It doesn't even taste much like bread today. It's chewy like pizza bread. That's the bi way the Bible time people made bread. Thank you, Lord, for bread to eat. I'll take it either way. And I want to say thank you, God, for pizza. Because I love pizza. Are those things really bottles? Those things don't look much like our bottles, do they? They aren't even plastic. What are they? Bible time people did not know how to make plastic. They didn't know how to make glass bottles either. So they made their bottles with animal skins. Sometimes the skins got old and cracked. Then they had to be thrown away. What things do you keep inside bottles at your house? What kind of things do you see inside bottles at the grocery store? Bible time people did not have most of those things. They had wine and milk. That was about all they could put in the skin bottles. What could you not have? What could you not have with Bible time bottles only? How would grocery shopping be different? Are you glad for bottles today? Would you rather have these animal skins? I have a bottle sitting right here. It has some lotion in it. <laughs> um, think of all the things that we have in bottles. Can you name a few? 
Will you please turn the light on? You flip a switch, the electricity goes on, right? Our electric lights go on. They light the room, they light your house. You even have lights outside your house. You could not flip a switch in Bible times. They did not have electricity, so they did not have electric lights. When the sun went down, people closed their doors. Their houses were dark, so people lit lamps like this. They had oil in the lamps. Then they'd light the oil on fire. Most homes had only one lamp. The lamp was made of clay. The clay was hard now. People squeezed oil from olives. They poured this olive oil into the lamp. They poured it through a big hole on the top. A wick was put in the small hole of the lamp. It went down into the olive oil. The wick was made of flax. Do you remember um, when they showed the picture of the roof? There was some flax up there. It's like a, almost like a grass, like a, um, a plant. People put the lamp on a stand or they would put it on a ledge on a wall. The lamp burned all night. That was the only light a Bible time home had. The Bible time lamp gave about the same light as a candle today. A child cries, something makes a noise. The Bible time person was glad for the lamp. Are you glad for the lights in your home? Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. I am very thankful for the lights. Time to clean up. In Bible times, only some rich people had bathtubs, but they did not have faucets. So they had the big bathtub, but they didn't have faucets. They could not get hot and cold water the way we get it. Most people had to go to the well to get their water. Remember we talked about the deep wells that some the men had to dig? Most people would get clean like this. They would pour water in a big basin. They would take what we call a sponge bath. They would not have enough water to get it get in it, right? So the basin's kind of small like a bowl. So they wouldn't be able to get in it. They just have to get the water out. Instead, they would wash themselves the way you wash your hands. To have warm water, they would put the water in a water pot first. They would let it sit in the sun all day because they couldn't heat it up. Then they would pour it in the basin. Other people had streams or rivers nearby, and it was easy for them to take a bath there. So some people did a sponge bath, and some people did it right in the river. Taking a bath had one more step. Many people put olive oil on their bodies after a bath. Rich people had olive oil with perfume in it. Poor people did not have money for this, so they used olive oil without perfume. This is how the olive tree looked. Do you see the olives? The oil from the olives was squeezed to keep in little jars like this. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a little tickle in my throat. Um, and we use olive oil for cooking now, don't we? Could I buy jeans at the clothing store? You couldn't buy a pair of jeans in Bible times. They didn't have them. And they did not have clothing stores. In Bible times, your mother would probably make all your clothes. This took many, many hours. So people did not have much clothing. Usually they wore the same clothes every day. They even wore them at night. That's because they had no pajamas or other special night clothing. Girls and boys wore almost the same kind of clothing. Here's a picture of a little girl and a little boy. Do you have more than one outfit? I know I do. Girls' clothing was more fancy. Their clothes did not have buttons or zippers. Most of their clothing did not have collars or sleeves. Sandals were worn much like our sandals today. They were wood or leather. A tunic was a lot like a nightshirt. So this is their long tunic. Bible times people did not have underclothes like ours. Girls and boys wore a tunic next to their body. That was their underclothes. The cloak or coat was like a bathrobe today. Girls and boys wore this over their tunic. 
They wore a wide belt around their waist. When a person ran, he tucked his tunic and cloak inside his belt. This was called girdling, girding, sorry, girding. Girls wore scarves on their heads. The scarf could be wrapped over their face. This became a veil to hide their face. Boys wore a turban. It was like a big scarf. It kept the sun and wind from the boy's neck and head. Clothes took many hours to make. First, people had to grow the flax or cotton, or they had to raise sheep and shear the sheep to get the wool. A mother and daughter would spin the wool or flax or cotton into thread. Then they wore the threads into cloth, wove, wove the threads into cloth. They used a loom to do this. Then they had to cut and sew the cloth to make clothes. You can see why it took so long, right? And there's some examples. Here's the boy's turban. And there's her scarf that could also be a veil. When clothes tore, people did not throw them away. They mended them. Clothes were passed from father to son. They were passed from mother to daughter. Think about this when you go in a clothing store. It's so easy today to buy clothes. Have you thanked God for the clothes you have to wear? Sometimes we can complain about our clothes, but we have a lot to be thankful for, don't we? That's, that's a loom and they're um, weaving the thread in, uh, to make material. A visit to Abraham's tent. Would you like to come see my home? This is it. My name is Isaac. I live in this tent with my father, Abraham, and my mother, Sarah. So the first boy, Jeremy, lived in a one-room house. Now we're going to Isaac's house, which is a tent. What does my father do for a living? He has sheep, goats, and cattle. He has camels, too. Our animals eat grass here. They drink water in a stream nearby. But when they have eaten most of the grass, we move. We take our tent down. We go another away to another place with more grass and water. People today that do that are called nomads or Bedouins. They live in their tent and they move around. Where did we get this tent? Our servants made it. They made it from goat's hair. If we had been poor, my mother would have made it. Do you see how we put up the tent? We put poles up first. Then we tie the tent to the poles with ropes. The ropes are made of goat's hair too. Have you been camping in a tent? It's fun. Would you want to live in a tent? I don't know. My mother has her own tent. If we were poor, she would have another room in this tent. The girls in the family would stay with her. Where is our kitchen? We do not have one. Do you see the hole outside the tent? It has stones around it. We cook over a fire in this hole. Where is our bedroom? We don't have that either. We put straw mats on the floor. We sleep on the mats. We spread an animal skin on the dirt floor. That is our table. Do you see my sister churning butter? The churn is an animal skin sewed together. My sister will shake the milk until the butter forms. Do you see the clay pots? Those are our dishes. A servant woman is grinding flour at the mill. If we were poor, my mother would do that. The animal skin hanging from a branch is a bottle of water. We do not have glass bottles like yours. Are you glad for your home? Can you thank God now for the helpful and beautiful things in your home? So you could take a moment and just look around your room and see if you could count maybe five things that you could thank God for. I'm going to do it with you. I have a fireplace over there I'm going to thank God for. I have big windows so I can see outside. I'm going to thank God for that. I have this comfy couch. I'm going to thank God for that. I have nice, cozy blankets all around me. That's four. I'm going to thank God for that. And for five, I'm going to thank him for the electricity because I'm thankful for that. How about you? What are you thankful for? 
This says the most wonderful house in the world. So we've already looked at Jeremy's house and Isaac's house. The, the most wonderful house wasn't really a house like yours. It was God's house, but it wasn't a church like yours. It was called a temple. King Solomon had his, this temple built. His father was King David. David gave the money to build the temple. He gave about $36 billion in gold. He also gave silver, wood, and stone, and that was just the beginning. That is much, much more than our buildings cost today. There are probably a few huge buildings that cost a billion dollars today, but not many. So they're inside. That's what a church might look like today, but back then the temple did not look anything like that. There were 180,000 workers who built the temple. It took them seven years to build it. The temple became a $40 billion house. No other building has ever cost so much. That is the way it looked outside. Let's look at what it looked like inside. Around the temple were many walls and pillars. There were many big open spaces called courtyards. In front of the temple was a big altar. Priests burned meat on this altar. That was an offering to God. There was also a huge water wash basin. It was called a laver. Priests had to wash their hands and feet here before they went inside. This is how the laver and the altar looked. There were only two rooms inside the temple. Only priests could go into them. Each day a priest would go into the first room. It was called the holy place. He burned incense on a golden altar. He took care of the golden table and with bread on it. That was called the table of showbread. He kept the seven golden oil lamps burning. That's this side. Incense is something you burn that smells really good. So kind of like a candle maybe that smells real good. You can have different kind of incense. The other room was called the Holy of Holies. Once a year, a priest could go in, but only that then. A gold, beautiful golden chest was there. It had angel-like figures on it. The stone tablets with the Ten Commandments, maybe you've heard about those, were inside the chest. This chest was called the Ark of the Covenant. And that is where we're going to end today. And maybe we can read the other half tomorrow. So this is um, the big book of Bible learning. And I think it's very interesting because when you hear Bible stories, then you can picture what those places were like. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this book. I hope next time you're hearing someone read the Bible and they talk about a house, going in a house, you can picture what that might have looked like. Or when they went into the temple, you can picture a little bit about what that looked like. So I hope you enjoyed this book.